The Nigerian mafia is spreading in Europe. One of their main sources of income is human trafficking, and thousands of young Nigerian women fall victim to the gangs. I have a video. If I show you the video, you will cry. One of the mafia strongholds is Castel Votuno in southern Italy. Here, Nigerian gangs control entire neighborhoods. They beat the girl, no food, no water. They lock the girl inside the room for, for days until they are able to conquer her. When Juliet Osabo wants peace and quiet, she comes to the sea. Four years ago, a rescue boat brought her to Italy's southern coast, not far from here. The Nigerian woman, whose name we've changed, had undergone a weeks-long journey by that stage. She'd first gone by truck through the Sahara, then by boat across the Mediterranean. There was no hope, and the situation in Nigeria is something that does not give the youth a, a better future. So I decided to, to make a move and see how it goes. Juliet had got as far as Libya when things suddenly went wrong. In the war-torn North African nation, she and other migrants were kidnapped by criminals. They rape any woman they want when they come in the night, like they tap, they get up, you, and till the next morning, they bring back the ladies, and when the ladies come back, they start crying, like, ah, what happened, why are you crying? Ah, they raped me all through the night, different men, and that was it. It was horrible for me. Juliet's nightmare didn't end when she reached Italy. The then 23-year-old ended up in the clutches of Nigerian human traffickers. Criminal gangs from Nigeria have spread rapidly in Italy in recent years. One of the hotbeds is here in Castel Votuno in the south of Italy. In the 1970s, the Italian mafia used it as an illegal dumping ground for toxic waste. Those who could afford to leave did so. That makes it an ideal breeding ground for the Nigerian gangs. At first, they focused on drug smuggling. Then came internet fraud and human trafficking. According to the UN, up to 80% of Nigerian women arriving in Europe now become their victims. Often, pimps known as madams control a group of young women, dictating their entire daily routine. Behind them lurks a well-organized network. Gang members smuggle the young women to Europe. If there are problems, they abduct the girls again and don't shy away from violence. Whatever the madam tells them to do is it's just what they do, like, okay, I want you to discipline this girl for me. And they beat the girl like, are you ready to pay her the money or not? And if the girl says, no, I'm tired, I, I don't want to do this work anymore, they continue to beat the girl. No food, no water, they lock the girl inside the room for, for days until they are able to conquer her. So I'll say they are heartless. At Rome's main train station, we meet David, though that's not his real name. He's preparing to leave Italy. For years, David was himself an active member of the Nigerian Mafia in Castel Vodono. He left after witnessing the murder of a young woman forced into sex work. Since then, he's lived in constant fear of retribution. They burned my house. They thought I was inside the house. They wanted me to die, but God is good. I got the chance to escape. David gives us rare insights into the criminal gangs. The business model is simple, to make as much profit as possible from the suffering of young women. The objective of the organization is money. If a girl is pregnant, they make her abort the pregnancy. If the girl survives, she survives. If she dies, she dies. They don't care. The young women have to hand over all their daily earnings. Experts estimate that Nigerian gangs make several hundred million euros every year this way. If the girl comes and doesn't pay the money, she can even be eliminated. 
I saw something you can't believe. They cut a person into pieces. Then they package it. For example, if we're 10 people that know about the dead body, you carry one kilo, I carry one kilo, he carries one kilo. Everyone goes to dispose of it. In the forest, for example, wherever. You will never trace the person. The person is just missing, just gone. Juliet managed to escape the clutches of the traffickers and found refuge in a shelter for migrant women. She now has her own apartment, but she often visits the social workers here. She's grateful to them, but she's disappointed in many of the residents. She says people should stick together, especially here. But the situation has robbed many of them of that spirit. When they see you progress and things are not going well for them, they always look for a way to bring you down. And you don't rise by bringing others down. 13 women and children are currently living in the shelter. Coordinator Sabrina Yovsi is currently preparing a room for a new arrival, another young Nigerian woman who's due to arrive in the evening. Sabrina has seen hundreds come and go. Sometimes they only stay a few nights. Sometimes the traffickers are waiting right outside the gate. Their only goal, to intimidate the women and send them back to the streets. The people who are hosted here, they're not in prison. They can leave. They can go. They are uh, absolutely free to do everything. So, you know, we were trying to involve them, to talk to them, to try to explain them what was going on. Listen, maybe you will be asked to get to prostitute or maybe to be a, a cleaning slave in somebody else's house. Something, it, it, this is not for free. They will always ask you something back. But you know, they had so much brainwashed and of course, after all they have been through Libya and they cannot even listen to us. Sabrina says the pressure on the young women is almost unimaginable. Even at the height of the pandemic with the country in lockdown, the exploitation continued. Those days were <laughs> unbelievable because, and it was hard for us to see this because they were kind of forced to still go out, even if the gate was closed. So they were kind of climbing the wall because they were asked to prostitute, to keep on what they were doing. And for them, it was frustrating because, you know, it's two months lost in the amount of money that they have to give back to the madame. The traffickers' tricks are almost always the same. Their networks are organized across borders. Beginning in their home countries, the young women are lured to Europe with rosy promises. The long journey across the desert and sea is financed for them. Once they arrive in Europe, they're told they now have debts of 40,000 euros or more, and that they won't have peace until they've paid off every last cent. Sergio Nazzaro is an advisor to the Italian Parliament's Anti-Mafia Commission. He specialises in Nigerian organised crime. These days, the state treats such groups the same as domestic mafia organisations. Yes, they are mafia. It's under the code law 416B. They have a structure like mafia. So the code of silence, violence, intimidation, psychological pressure, revenge and so on and so on. They are really spread all around Italy. They, we have many cults, different groups. They are connected. Uh, uh, I think it's a big issue. This mafia hunter comes from near Castel Votuno. He's personally witnessed the rise of the Nigerian gangs. We meet him outside the city on an estate originally owned by an Italian mafia clan. The judiciary confiscated the property and transferred it to a non-profit association. Nazaro says he deliberately chose the sprawling estate as a meeting place because it shows who continues to pull the strings in the Italian underworld. Nigerian mafia, it's dangerous, but they deal with uh, drug trafficking, prostitution, mailing, uh, internet scams, uh, card credit fraud, uh, but who control the economy or part of it? Who is in the public administration in political levels is the Italian mafia. So 
who is more dangerous. They are visible in the street and this is a strategic plan made by the Italian Mafia. So let's outsource the crime. They are the bad guys, they are on the street, we are invisible. Because the main goal of Mafia is to be quite silent. The Nigerian Mafia is also divided into various so-called secret societies. And according to David, many of them are spreading throughout Europe. They have one thing in common, extreme brutality. David is still in contact with members and regularly receives information about them. I have a video. If I show you the video, you will cry. It's what happened to this girl. They forced her to be a prostitute. Because she refused, she was tortured to death. The video is so horrible that we can't show it in full. The torturers will probably never face justice, because to authorities, many of these women don't exist. Most of them, they're ghosts. They're not registered. Nobody knows about them. The government doesn't know anything about them. They're here without documents, without anything. So if they die, it's very difficult for the government to know that this person has been missing. Juliet now has a residence permit and works at a restaurant. Still, when she goes walking, she continues to be harassed by men. They are disgusting. Oh my God, they are terrible. You see, they start going and coming. They will start, the, the thing that really gets me annoyed is they will bring out money, they will be showing, like, what is 20 euro? So I cannot sit down in the garden at peace without being interrupted that, are you walking? Oh, I want to sleep with you. For me, it's disgusting. As long as there's demand for cheap sex, gangs will continue to make business from the suffering of young women like Juliet.